We have seen how to create matrices and how to manipulate uh, how to manipulate them in the data manipulation chapter. In this video, we are going to see some additional operations with matrices and uh, learn a little bit more about lists and data frames. So let's begin by creating some matrices for us to to use. So A is a matrix from one to nine, and B is a matrix filled with two. Both of them are three by three. So in R you can uh, do many operations just uh, straight using matrix, for instance, sum it with a scalar number, multiply it by a scalar number, and you can also transpose it with the T commons. There's many, many common uh, for matrix manipulation. You can multiply a matrix by another. However, this uh, multiplication is a uh, element-wise multiplication. It's element by element. If you want a real matrix, mathematical matrix multi multiplication, it's A, use the percentage symbol, multiply by B. That's the real matrix multiplication. And you have some many other useful comments like for instance row sum A you, you have column sums, you have column mean and <coughs> yeah. row mean many useful comments. And another thing is uh, the columns of matrices can have names. You can use the call names uh, common to discover the names of them. Actually, in this matrix, it's null because it was not set. But then you, you can set the name, for instance, like that. Call names is equal to a, uh, an array of strings of characters, which gives the name of the matrix of the column. So now the the columns of this matrix is named. Um, okay, so now talking about data frames and, and lists, the main difference between them and the other types of uh, data in R is that they are het heterogeneous. Uh, this means that they can have uh, other types of data uh, inside of them. A matrix only or is numeric or is character. You can't have numeric and characters mixed together. And well, even less, you can have a matrix inside of a matrix or something like that. But with data frames and lists, you can, for instance, let me just convert this both matrices to data frames by using the data frames common. And now I'm going to create a list containing using the list common. I'm assigning it to C, containing the matrix A and the matrix B. The first argument here before the equal is the name. I just created it with the same name, but I could be given a different name, for instance, like, uh, I don't know, matrix 1 <coughs> and matrix 2. Okay. So now when I take a look and see, you can see that it's composed by two elements named accordingly to the name that I gave and each of these elements is a matrix. Everything is inside a single um, single variable. If I ask C uh, using the dollar symbol and the matrix the name that I gave it returns just the, the element. Let's take a look in the class of C. the list. Uh, another way to select elements in the list is using double uh, brackets. You see the first element and the second element. And the lists are very useful in functions because we are going to see in the next class that functions can only return a single uh, variable. It's the way that functions are designed. But we can kind of trick the system by returning a list 
containing many elements inside of it is still technically just one element but containing many elements inside of it oh, let's take a, a look in the structure of C you see here is a list composed of two elements both these elements are matrices uh, and no, are called matrices and they are data frames with three variables and we, here we can see the details of each of them and uh, data frames are similar to lists, but they are bidimensional. Bidimensional, and however, uh, care should be taken uh, when dealing with lists and data frames. Like it said in the Spider-Man move, movie, uh, big powers come with big responsibilities. Uh, all this flexibility uh, comes with a computational cost with it. So. Uh, many of the more complex R functions uh, return a data frame, uh, which is fine because you're going to just use their results and that's okay. But when you like going doing heavy calculations or heavy processing, it, you need to be careful when using data frames because the cost, uh, the computational cost of dealing with data frames is uh, exponential in most of the cases. So. As long as you don't select them too frequently, for instance, inside, inside of a looping stru structure, selecting, I mean, like, for instance, I want just this element from the, from the data frame. Uh, it should be fine. Um, also, uh, we, hey, we have seen the R bind and the C bind common. Both of them have uh, exponential cost. So just to, to have an idea, yeah, um, I, I, I'm, I'm still going to show the how the for common works. It creates a looping structure, but here what I'm doing is I'm I'm repeating uh, a million a billion times uh, an R bind common of A with itself. Okay, so you can see how the cost increases exponentially. See each each number gets exponentially more difficult for the system. So I'm going to cancel it because it's never going to finish. But you can see that it quickly es escalates to a cost that is just incredibly high. If you keep it, this is because mainly because of the R bind comment that I put there. But also, if you if you do a four here, I'm going to do this uh, similar four. Um, but it's selecting uh, uh, the element I and the um, just the temperature, just the, the variable called temp. And you can see that it, it might look fast, but it's, it's quite slow, you know, like a, a 10,000 10, uh, numbers in just, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds is, is incredibly slow. R is able to make uh, billions of calculations per second if you, if you use it correctly. So that's quite slow. Uh, so yeah, R is much faster when dealing with vectors. Actually, when you when you have a data frame and you use the the dollar symbol, it returns a vector, and then you can use this vector fine. You know, but selecting inside of the data frame like I did, it it's kind of slow. So as your or homework, I would like you to just run this comment in your R. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> this comment is uh, it. You can see that here the wrap comment in the first uh, lecture of programming we learned that it creates a repetition of the next element, the, the first element. So I asked it for a, a vector of a thousand numbers and asked it to repeat this uh, nine million times. And what will happen is that this comment will quickly fill the the memory of your computer and will make it freeze before you can even save your work. So you can use this to maybe prank someone that you don't like or something like that. Just ask him, like, oh, can you run this comment, please? It's not working. <laughs> no, maybe you shouldn't do that. But it, it's interesting to see how how it this comments run so fast that you can't even react. It will fill the memory of the computer, and you can't even uh, block the process. So if, if you want to try it just to see, first save everything that you have. So yeah, th this class doesn't have a homework, and I'm going to give a homework in the next one. So see you there. Bye.